All right, guys, I think we're live. Just waiting for some people to come up on, and then we can start discussing what we need to discuss. Let's just modify my browser, make sure this is easier to use. Hi, Ishan, how are you doing? Just give me a few seconds. Hi, Atmiya Jadwani. Hi, Pratibha. Hope you guys are doing well. Hi, Somavo Bhattacharya. Hash and Star plays Kannada. Well, um, I have this background because I use something called Open Broadcaster Software. And I have a green screen behind me. It just makes everything easier. Hi, Sagar. Hi, India News. What happened in the last stream? Well, my internet just blew up. So I had to redo this entire video. So I get a chance to uh, get a lot more people to understand that retirement in India is, is harder than you think it is. And uh, let's see if I can show you. Let's just wait for a few more people to come on. I'm just going to say uh, hi to a few of you. Um, hi, The Mask Man. How are you doing? Hi, Shubham Kumar. Hi, Tech by Prateek. Udaya asks, do you really get time to hang out? Uh, yes, sometimes I do. Actually, I do get time to hang out. Um, I'm just, I'm getting faster at the things I do, so it's easier. <clears throat> Good to see you, dude. Good to see you, Abhishek. Just waiting for a few more people and then we can get started and and yeah hi sahil hi satyam hello aditya good to see all of you on uh, at 11 in the night thanks for joining me so late in the night hi soham man it is really late um, and it is a weekday so thank you all for joining on and I'm going to make sure it's worth it you're going to know by the end of this live session you're going to know exactly how much money to the last rupee you need to retire um, so it's going to be helpful for most of you guys and hopefully you'll be able to have a chat with about this with your friends um, hash and star place Canada I know a little bit of Tulu Pranav future of digital consultant what does digital consultant means so much uh, Sagar asked me to plug Avalon Army's YouTube channel uh, guys there's this unofficial Avalon Army YouTube channel that you guys should subscribe to if you have the time. Uh, it's run by people from the Avalon community. I think Shashank's TED Talk is coming on that channel. So yeah, it's just it's a plug. Nitish has been waiting since two hours for this. I've been waiting for two hours too. Uh, I'm telling you, today's session is going to be so good that you're going to wonder why you didn't subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification. Um, Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it's, you know, it's, the economy is fucked, dude. It's actually, it's in a really bad shape. And I'll tell you why it's in a bad shape. And it's going to be, it's going to open your eyes more than anything. Om Babar asks, I'm fascinated by the amount of knowledge you have, Varun. How do I begin my journey to explore such vast domains? It takes time and it takes this inherent curiosity. Um, which I think you guys have. If you're here at 11 p.m. in the night trying to find out about this, it means you are curious. Just find a way to monetize it. Um, by the way, uh, guys, we have this Telegram group. You guys can join that too. It's called Avalon Army. Uh, you can just look for it on Telegram. Hey, Rit Rishi Rishikesh, I hope that I pronounced that right. Hi, Ayan. Hi, Ronak Majethia8. Ronak Majetia 8 says, Hey Cyborg. <laughs> uh, MK says, Gonna drop a bomb. It's gonna be much, much better than a bomb. Just wait for it. When I start talking about it, you'll see that uh, the people who came before us, our parents, uh, that generation has made things a little hard for us. I'll, I'll show you. Henge um, Idira Maya Baya. Oh, Maya Bhai. You have mixed two languages, Hindi and Kannada. 
that's what and English that just confused me dude <laughs> um, how to build a great alumni network without joining an MBA college join the Avalon army telegram the Python inventor says hey Varun got interested in physics after listening to your podcast time to become a Swiss knife it's it's how the world is we just made these different systems uh, because we thought it was uh, easier to teach um, where are your chips okay so I think we'll start a couple more viewers and then we'll start today's topic This is a almond biscotti, dude. Two more viewers. India News, um, jobs at avalonlabs.co. Alright, guys, so I think we'll start. I'm actually going to make this, uh, I'm actually going to start the, this video by telling you that I think it's almost impossible for millennials to retire in India. Actually, I think all over the world, it's become, it's come to a point where, you know, in the beginning, like 50, 60 years ago, lifespan was low. People only lived till like 55, 60 at maximum. Um, in the 1950s, the average lifespan of the world was about 45 years, right? And now in places like Hong Kong, the lifespan has gone up to 84 years, right? So it's become harder and harder for us to die and the problem with that is after you retire and in most jobs in the past people retired at the age of 60 after you retire you just you chill right and you live off your savings it's not like you know you save up some amount of money and then you you know use that money what you do is you save up that money you put it in a bank account and you live off the interest of that right so that's how most people saved up for retirement it was a foolproof process some people bought um, real estate but now what's happened is most of the real estate has already been picked up and the salaries of people has not been going up steadily with inflation. For most of you that don't know, inflation is a process where the cost of everything goes up and the average inflation in India has been 6%, right? So 6% inflation, the cost of everything is going up, but over the last 12 years, the salary of an engineer has not moved, right? Which means that things have gotten expensive and your salaries haven't increased. And the problem with that is how do you save for retirement then? And this is compounded by one last problematic issue, which is that you are probably not going to work till 60. You have maybe 10 years till automation kicks in, takes out your job. You have maybe at maximum 20 years till it takes out complex jobs. And then what do you do? If you're at the age of 20 and you say you have another 20 years to work, so you retire by the time you're 40 and you have to have made enough money by that time to live till 90 years old because medicine, modern medicine is able to keep people alive longer. And let me show you why. Let me show you why. It's because of this beautiful, beautiful invention called antibiotics. In the 1950s, people died of infections, right? And then we got antibiotics in, it became mainstream. And then, you know, people started dying of heart disease because infections started going down. Um, heart disease, we started inventing something called statins. Let me show you what statins look like. Right? These are statins. Um, they reduce cholesterol. Cholesterol is what causes deposition of plaques in your arteries. And, you know, we managed to solve that too. And now we're able to keep people alive better and better and better. The tech in hospitals, the chance of you staying alive is very high. We have things like immunosuppression, right? If you have an autoimmune disease. So we have a lot of cool stuff to keep people alive, which is a good thing, which means you live for a very, very, very long time. But the problem with that is how in the world are you going to save up enough money? So let's just quickly uh, show you what a retirement planning calculator looks like. Right, so this is one from getmoneyrich.com. Um, you know, the name is weird, uh, but, but this calculator is solid. And I'm gonna show you how if you're a millennial and you're probably, you know, let's, let's just say you're 22, 23, 24, um, it's almost impossible to retire. So let me show you this. 
So let's assume your age is 24 now, right? Actually, maybe let's take a lower age, 22. Now, because of automation, because the number of simple jobs are going away, computers have taken out the simple jobs and now they're going to come for the complex jobs. So one person is able to have an entire team of robots working for him instead of other people. And the robots are really cheap, right? So look at this. So you'll probably, let's assume you retire at 45. Maybe you have another 22 years before computers just take over everything. Now you live till 90 years old, right? Just watch this. Maybe you have an expense right now of 50,000 rupees. And the truth is, if you have, you know, a family, or even if you don't have a family, 50,000 <coughs> rupees has started to kind of become the norm in Bangalore. Right? It costs you at least this much to live your life. And you know, what we're going to do is we're going to take what it costs us to live today and project that including inflation for, uh, you know, 20 years in the fu future. <coughs> let's assume we have nothing in our retirement fund. And let's assume the average inflation till lifetime is six years. Right? So let's leave everything else. And I'm going to hit the calculate button. And this is going to scare you. You need to retire, you need to, in the next 23 years, make 9.2 crores, 9.2 crores, right? Which means if you want to make 9.2 crores every month, you need to be saving 87,000 rupees, right? To live a semi decent life in India. And this is like a, I wouldn't even say it's, it's a lower middle class life in India, 50,000 rupee monthly expense. So you have to save. 87,000 rupees every month. Can you believe that? It's, it's nearly impossible. And add on top of this that, you know, when you get in a salary in India, you first pay tax, right? You're paying out tax. So 30% is gone there. So to make 87,000 rupees, to save 87,000 rupees, you need to make much, much more than that because you need, you have some expenses right now, right? And on top of that, you have, um, you have to probably buy a house and a house costs another crore on top of this at minimum. If you're buying a two BHK um, or a three BHK in, you know, any non central part of Bangalore, it'll cost you at least a crore. You want to live in a society like a decent society, two BHK, three BHK, it's anywhere between a crore and two crores, right? So it's, it's expensive. And uh, so that's almost 10 crores that you have to save in 22 years, which is impossible. It's nearly impossible. Right? And let me show you something. The salary, let's say average salary of engineer in India. Most of you have studied engineering. Um, let's see. Let's open Glassdoor and let's open Payscale. Let's open two different places. As you can see, an average engineer makes about 6.97 lakhs a year. That's the average, but you can see that most engineers in India actually make about three or four lakhs a year. That's about 30,000 rupees a month to maybe 50,000 rupees a month. How are you supposed to save 87,000 rupees a month when you're making just 50,000 rupees and maybe out of that 50,000 rupees, you need to spend on your actual rent, your groceries, uh, your, you know, leisure. How are you supposed to do that? Right? How does this make any sense? How, how did like what? What have, what has the past generation done to the economy for you to be in this state? Because the truth is in the previous generation, the cost of everything was lower, right? And salaries actually matched up to inflation. Today, salaries are not matching up to inflation. This number, this number here, or if you look at this mechanical engineer, an average mechanical engineer in India makes three lakhs, 3.5 lakhs a year, right? Let me just sh show you this. Divide this by 12. That's 29,000 rupees a month. How, how are you going to do this? It doesn't make sense. Even if you move your monthly expenses down to 30,000 rupees, let's take 30,000. You still need 5.5 crores. You still need to save 52,000 rupees a month. It's not possible. Right. And, and I've been thinking about this problem, right? Because I've, one of the things we kind of forget is the time value of money. We forget that, a crore today is not a crore in 30 years. If you put it in the simplest mutual fund or fixed um, deposit, that money accumulates. But if you look at mutual funds, the average return on mutual funds in India last year 
if I remember correctly, is about minus 1%. So even that can't match up to inflation. Right? So what is going on? Like even the money you save will probably decline over time. It's, it's actually a gamble, right? But over enough given amount of time, equity, debt, uh, liquid funds, they're all, you know, they're reasonably stable, but it doesn't look to be so stable, right? So first you have the problem of how do I accumulate cash? And second, you have the problem is even if I accumulate cash, what's the guarantee that is going to beat inflation, right? So this is, um, this is, this is crazy. And this is not hypothetical, right? Somebody said, this is hypothetical. It's not, this is going to happen to you, whether you like it or not, this calculator works. You can try any calculator. And if you go, there was a times of India article, if I remember correctly, that number put retirement at, let me just see if I can find that. How much do you need to retire in India? There was this amazing article that I'd read somewhere, somewhere with this nice graph. Yeah, you need, uh, you need quite a bit of money, man. Because today, if you spend 50,000 rupees, 20, 30 years from now, that 50,000 rupees will actually be worth about four or five lakhs. You need to spend four or five lakhs a month. Look at this, they're, they're putting numbers at 14 crores, 11 crores, and the bare minimum about, I mean, I don't think you'll be able to survive on 1.3 lakhs a month, uh, 50 or uh, 20 years later, because 1.3 lakhs a, a month, 50, 20 years later is not your today's 1.3 lakhs, right? Just like today's 1.3 lakhs might have been yesterday's 20,000 rupees, right? So it's, it's crazy. And this is, uh, there's somebody in the comments saying this is not realistic. Of course it is, right? Talk to your parents, pick up the phone or go, go to your parents' room and ask them how much a, a loaf of bread cost 30 years in the past. Just ask them. Ask them what their salary was 30 years in the past. Because I remember the first salary that my mother had was 2,000 rupees. It's not like, oh, 2,000 is a low number. It's that 2,000 at that point was actually a significant amount of money, a decent amount of money. And they've kept up with inflation, right? Their salaries have kept up with inflation, not ours. Not most of you guys, right? So what's the solution, right? And it's before we come to the solution, I need to talk about the problem in the first place. The problem is the, the two problems. Firstly, it's that you get paid dependent on what value you add to a company. That's what it should have been. But today, these salaries, especially these two salaries that you see here, it's, it's not based on what you bring to a company. It's just like a, like a thumb rule. The thumb rule hasn't changed in 10 years. Nobody's negotiating higher salaries. Nobody's saying, Hey, this is, there's something wrong with this. And most of the smart people, most of the smart engineers are leaving India because it's outside of India. It's much easier to make this kind of money to make what you're worth because here nobody's paying, right? And the richest people in India are hoarding wealth, right? And when wealth is hoarded, like when you're a rich person, one of the best things you can do for the economy is to spend that money. When I was younger and I thought of uh, somebody who was, uh, you know, going out and some rich guy, when I used to see, you know, these kids of these rich people going out and, you know, having fun and, you know, going to different resorts and burning money, I used to be like such bad people. They're, they're horrible people, you know, they, they don't do anything in life. Th that was my thought process. But now that I think of it, I think that's actually a good thing because when a rich person goes to a resort and spend some money or goes and blows up money at some party or whatever, they're putting money back in the economy. They're not hoarding it. The biggest problem that happens is if somebody makes a lot of money and hoards that money, doesn't put that back in the economy, doesn't, doesn't even save that, doesn't put that into a high risk fund, whatever it is, right? And that, that means you have no chance of putting your hands on it. And this is caused like a crunch of money flowing in the economy for people who are lower level engineers, right? So that's problem number one. And problem number two is automation. Because the truth is, um, you know, you could continue working till 60, but I can pretty much guarantee you that at 60, the current jobs that we have today, especially the way we, we study and the things we do, I don't think we will have those sort of jobs. I think it will be very risk oriented jobs. You only have a performance fee based on if you do a good job for another person. I don't think these stable salaries will exist then, right? So this, then it, this starts becoming a really, really big problem, right? And, um, my mother's actually, a she, she works in the field of finance and she's been talking about this problem for 10 years to me. She's been saying, why don't you, you know, if you have to save this much or you'll be in trouble. And I didn't believe her. I was just like, yeah, it's not going to happen. But over the last one year, I've started to realize, yeah, this is a big problem. 
and even Shashank's been telling me about this for a while. But I'm like, yeah, you know, I I don't see because I, I I'm an entrepreneur, right? My the amount of money we've made um, at Avalon over the last two years, me, Shashank, Abhinav, maybe a couple of others from the company, we can retire many times over. And the main reason for this is because the money we've made over the last two years, it's in it's it's not a nine crores or whatever, but it's enough personally for all of us to put in a bank right now and over the next 20 years we'll be done. Just the two years of effort that we put in. But at the same time, I know that's not a possibility for most of you guys because your salary is fixed and you work in the past. People used to work 9 a.m. in the morning to 5 p.m. in the evening. The world only worked for eight hours, right? Today, people are working for 12 hours. So you have no time after 5 p.m. to do a secondary job. You have no time to to figure out how to get these resources, right? Because you're working 12 hours a day. And if you don't work 12 hours a day, then you're going to get kicked out of your job. Right. And I understand because all of these advertising executives, even the people in Avalon for to, to a certain extent, we don't like the world is 24 seven. My client can sometimes call me at 11 in the night. Sometimes clients of Avalon, and most of these guys are well-funded startups and fortune 500 companies. They, they don't mind calling us at 12 in the night, right? There are no rules. So, um, you don't have time as an employee to spend three or four hours at, at the end of the day to, to, you know, work on a secondary project, diversify your income. So I've spoken about the problem, but I'll tell you that all of these problems are actually compounded by the fact that we live a very, very long time. If this was 1960s, you'll probably retire and in two years you'll die. That was, that was the truth, right? Probably even, you know, before, before retirement, that retirement age of 60 is actually created, um, because people started really aging by that time and they were, they would have died in the next three or four years. People just were just like, I want to spend my last five years by myself, you know, enjoying the seas somewhere. Right. But this is nearly impossible. Now there are costs on top of this. You have a house that you have to pay for. I've already spoken about it. Add on top of this education cost for your children. Right. You're probably going to have two kids on average. Think about the education costs. That's at least another one, two, three crores. And obviously your kids are going to want to do liberal arts in some American college that pays them zero um, after graduation, but they still want to do it because they want to post on their Instagram story that, uh, you know, they're studying in XYZ college. So yeah, I, I don't see how most people can make this money. Right? So finally, how do you solve this problem? Well, the truth is that there is there's not too many ways we can solve it except by understanding that the way people make money today is probably a little bit wrong, right? The way the standard salary and the standard 10% increment is not correct, right? So what we need to do is we need to start understanding that it's important for us to a diversify what we know. So we are not just able to be useful in one job. We're able to be useful in many jobs at the same time. So you can be a very good marketer, but if you also know how to write code, that's an added value advantage for you. If you studied, um, say civil engineering, maybe you could pack on skills of architecture. Maybe you could pack on skills of actually going out and being able to show people 3d demos, right? Because all of those things give you a competitive advantage between one person and another. And now the truth is, you know, I used to always think I can save everybody, right? I, I always, I always thought, you know, everybody can do well. But the truth is for you to do well, right? Specifically for you to do well, some people need to do badly. That's how success works, especially in a monetary world. It's, it's not, and wealth is not entirely zero sum, but at the same time, it's not, um, it's not free of that either. Not everybody can get rich because as somebody who's employed to do something, if you're really good at what you do, you are actually denying other people their jobs, right? And on the flip side, if you're bad at what you do, other people are going to get ahead of you. If you know only one thing, even however good you might be, if somebody else knows five other things and is reasonably good at that thing, they will get it. Right? So first step is diversify your skill set. Learn as many things as possible. Learn that the world is a holistic. It's not like, Oh, this there's, you know, if you're, if you're somebody who studied construction, you're like, Oh, you know, I, I understand construction. I don't need to understand finance. No construction, technology, finance. It gives you a 360 degree picture of what you need to build. Secondly, take responsibility. Start working on equity, right? A lot of people in India don't understand the value of early stage equity. If you have 1% in a company or 10% in a company or 10% of the profits of a company, that is incredible, right? Especially if you believe and you're sure of your skills, because today, if you're not, if you can't perform in the real world, you're going to get kicked out. 
right, of your job. And we can see that, right? I've kept posting stories about how Cognizant is laying off people. Bigger companies are laying off people. You just cannot compete with a robot. Zomato laid off 550 people and they blamed automation, right? So it's going to happen to you unless you are able to diversify and unless you're able to prove that, hey, I can actually run ads and get you this many clients, but I won't take a single rupee. I want 10% commission. And you won't believe it. Avalon, you know, our model right now, at least on the services side, we take a fixed fee, a retainer, and then we take a 2% kicker. That is a 2% rev share on almost every client we work with, right? And we have some really big clients. We spent crores for some clients, right? So we are a performance-based company. And most of you guys should start moving into the performance-based mindset, which is I will get you pr progress, but I want X percent of that progress. And that's how equity works in general. So start taking equity bets. And finally, try to diversify your, your income too. Put a little bit of money, take some risks, right? Sometimes, and there's this game on mobile. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. There's a game called uh, capitalism, right? And the game is very simple, right? You, you start with a little bit of money and you have to put it in different places. And there's this tab called invest. And when you click on the invest tab, it gives you five options. It says, well, you can either invest in a powerful nation's debt and uh, you know, the chance of success is 99%, but the return is 1%. You get 1% um, on whatever you put in, 1% extra on whatever you get it put in. You can invest in a startup and that has a success rate of some 10 or 20%. I think in the real world, it's even lower. And your chance of um, success uh, or your, the, the return is, could be 200, 300%. So you have to start taking calculated risks and be okay with some of your money, losing some of your money, right? Now, a lot of people get scared of the thought of losing money and that's because humans are wired for something called loss aversion. Let me show you that. And it's, it's a, you prefer to avoid a loss than acquire an equivalent gain. So in your head, you prefer not to lose $5 than to find $5. So what's happening is that you are, what's going to happen with loss aversion is that you're going to be like, okay, I've made some amount of money. I'm going to put this in a very safe, you know, at least I want that 1% versus gambling some of it for a 200% return. But the truth is all the people who are successful in life have won on crazy odds on risk, right? So yeah, that's, that's where it's at. And even today with things like real estate, back in the day when you had those empty plots and you had to pick one of the plots and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to buy that. And I don't know if it's going to do well. It was purely on hearsay, right? When one of my friend's parents bought a, a land in a place called Banashankri in Bangalore, 20, 30 years in the past, he said, I heard from my boss that this place is going to appreciate. No research, no going online, checking things out, just hearsay. Somebody else told him that, put in the money. Lucky the place appreciated, but we don't know if that's true or not. So you need to diversify, you need to put a little bit there, put a little bit here and use intelligence, right? Follow the right people on Instagram, on YouTube, wherever, and make sure that you're not following the crowd too late. Because if you are the last person in, if you bought the land today and you're like, okay, I hope it'll appreciate another 10%, maybe you're the last guy in. And the last guy in never makes money. So the truth is the best place to be is not the first guy, it's one guy before the last, right? Actually. You know, anyone before the last guy is the best place, right? So this is what I think um, is a big problem. Second thing is stop thinking that a degree in MBA in management is going to save you because it costs your parents one or two crores, right? Especially if you're doing it outside of India. In fact, in India, it costs you about 30, 40 lakhs. Outside of India, it'll cost you crores. Instead, take that money and put it in the, put it in any savings, anything absolutely anything and don't touch it for 10 years and what's the magic of compound interest right whereas what's happening today is that what's happening today is that people are taking all this money and uh, they're going into college and they're hoping that college will teach them enough so that their return on investment is higher but the truth is it's not it's rubbish especially and and the only I, I do recommend college for maybe say medicine or research if you're doing genetics you need a lab you need to go to college if you're doing medicine how are you supposed to be a surgeon right? Without going to college. That's difficult because you don't have the access to the equipment. But if you're doing architecture, go be an apprentice. If you're doing, um, if you're studying finance, go work with somebody else, learn online. If you're doing code, learn online. If you're doing marketing, learn online, run an ad, right? So the truth is if you're going for a digital skill, if you're going to college, you are an idiot, right? And you're wasting your parents' money. It's better to put that in a fixed deposit. 
it's better to put that in any long term savings rather than wasting it on on, on college i right? don't put that pressure and that way that money compounds over time instead of burning it right so i guess uh, that's that's a sad state of things and you know i don't want to sound like somebody who is uh, i don't want to sound negative right it's and but i also know the the dangers of false positivity this economy has is ruined and the problem is some people will be stuck at the bottom and i've been thinking about what do we do about that and and idealism sometimes i talk from an idealistic perspective it's just it's something for humans to work towards here's what i think i think it should be like gta right this should be like um i don't know if you guys have heard of how things work in gta but you start off with a house you start off with some electricity you don't have to pay for the basics so i think what the government should do is is they should give everyone the basics right and what are the basics a house uh electricity an internet connection um a water and maybe a basic set set of clothes i think just three or four pair, pairs of clothes so that you can use it and do whatever you want with it and that's your starter right and maybe groceries on a month on month like minimum groceries just like you know how it works in army rations and the advantage with that is that now you don't have to focus on making money just to pay your basics so you can take those risks you can take equity based risks one of the things i find in my employees is if somebody comes from a really really bad background like by bad i mean from a background where they don't have any money then they will not take equity based risks because it scares them right and i come from that background and it doesn't scare me so much because i've been doing it since i was 12 or 13 right so but but it's not the same for somebody who's 25 26 who's just started doing it right so you think about their condition they have never been in a situation where they've been asked to take a risk and when they have to take a risk they have to sacrifice a basic salary but if you give them the basics if you give them a house uh, not even a house it could be a, a room with a kitchen and a bathroom right just something simple um and all of these basic amenities then they can take risks and if you can take risks you can make money and i can promise you I, i i i can see this happening if the government did that most people would quit their job most people in india would quit their job and do something they love because the truth is when you're sitting in a job is think of you you guys are probably thinking of jobs in facebook or amazon i'm going to tell you a job like you know somebody working in hdfc bank doing some assistant sales role it's a horrible job you have to do it for 40 years straight right it's just calling again and again and again and again trying to make ends meet calling clients right meeting clients being nice to them or think about retail or think about food like fast food think about somebody sitting at the counter in mcdonald some 20 year old guy who's trying to make supplemental income to pay for his college right who's sitting there and customers are coming and you know saying this food is bad you're a horrible person do it faster why would people sign up for that i don't see any of these people sign up for signing up for that automate that automate those parts where people have to take this damage once you know when we were selling our company the first one of the first companies that was buying us which was a um a delhi based company they were actually a very big recruitment consultant in india when i was speaking to their ceo he said we have a customer support team and every day they get thousands of abuses why do you think somebody would sign up to get abused every day and i'll tell you the answer to pay for rent to pay for electricity to pay for water to make their basics work and the truth is that we've created an economy where some of us just because you're lucky being born to you know rich parents or parents who made at least the basic savings for you you don't have to do this but most of india has to and if we can give them the basics they can take those risks on maybe not the fifth risk or the seventh risk or the tenth risk they will end up winning and you you make you speed up innovation too why are we spending most of our budget on defense right we don't we don't need to we don't we we actually don't need to we we should be giving people the basics and then i think in a way defense will get better too because then innovative people who want to help in defense can get involved right guys so i've gone on a rant um you know it's a it's a tough situation to be in this is the idealistic perspective where we force the government to actually give basics um so that and this is not related to money the basics are not related to money it's just everybody gets this by default when they are born just the very 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 basics um and and we can like with solar energy with with the way we're doing water right now i think it's possible but you know it's still tough i don't i don't see the gov- there's no reason for the government to to do this right why would they why would they care about anybody why would they care about individuals right because 
by the time most of the people who run the government are 55 years old they've never used this calculator they don't think like millennials right and and there's no incentive for them to they've made their money they have another 10 20 30 years to live and they're out and for us we have 40 50 years to suffer through so yeah i, I just hope the government becomes younger so that it becomes our problems that that take precedence because we are at the end of the day you guys everyone watching this are the future it's not somebody who's why would somebody who's 30 years old make decisions for the future of the country i think it should be the future of the country making decisions for the future of the country with old people maybe advising i i don't i'm not stupid to discount their experience in life either but the truth is it's a combined effort with us having a little more stake because it is our future in question right what's going to happen over the next 10 years so yeah that's that's it for my rant and thank you for joining me on this video um if you like this uh subscribe to me on youtube follow me on instagram uh, hit the bell icon because i keep putting up videos like this my next video is actually going to be on a genetic test that i did um, and how i'm going to show you how all humans are actually uh, brothers and sisters like really brothers and sisters but not just all humans but all animals on the planet are our cousins and we all share a common ancestor and i'm going to show you how much of our dna matches and all of that stuff so yeah subscribe to me on youtube Bye-bye. Ending stream.